What is going on my friends and welcome back to another video on the channel. Well, as you all know, cryptos are crashing, right? As we can see, Bitcoin's down 11%, ADA 14%, Solana's up about 2%, which is pretty sick, XRP down 18%, BNB down 16%, ETH down 12%, Matic down 20%, the list goes on and on and on. Now, I think that there are two key main reasons as to why this is happening and why I am not stressed out about it, why I honestly think that this is a good thing, a healthy thing, somewhat relatively expected thing, and going forward, why I I think people will look back at this and be like, dang, that kind of sucked, but it wasn't too bad. Okay. So now the first reason, of course, is going to be outside of the technical realm due to the fact that we did. Let's get that off the screen. Dang it. No advertisements, no free advertisements on this side of town. But you guys do know that El Salvador did um, adopt it as its legal tender today. Today it went into full effect. And so, of course, with such a massive milestone, with something this big that can be so important for the general mass adoption for cryptos, there was the buy the rumor, sell the news type of event in which we will see a big event taking place where everyone's excited. Then that day comes and then it crashes, right? We've seen that with Doge with Saturday Night Live. We've seen it within the stock market for, say, um, whenever they announce some of their reports it's a very common thing okay people are excited 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 all the way up until that day that it happens and then they want to sell it because they think that it's at its peak and that happens now there is a technical reason as to why we are seeing this happen as well and that is due to key resistance now i don't mean key resistance like minor key resistance i'm talking major resistance is what we just ran into so you mix in major resistance with el salvador having it you know the, the its first day as bitcoin being a legal tender and that is the perfect storm to see a pullback now what we're going to take a look at is what this key resistance is and what it means going forward is this the beginning of the bear market or is this a retracement so what we know with cryptos is that they will always retrace it happens all the time cryptos will retrace to the downside where they'll be, they'll go up they'll retrace down they'll go back up they'll retrace down they'll go back up they do this right we see these retracements quite often now at the moment we do know that whenever we go from our swing high down to our swing low this key region the 786 to the 618 is going to be a deterrent or a determinant of whether we are seeing a retracement in which the price has a bull trap a little bit of a bull trap right here where bulls get all excited and then the price reverses and that's a dead cat bounce and we continue into a bear market or whether or not we're seeing a re reversal right a bullish reversal in which the price comes down retraces to the downside bullish reversal back up clearing of that high etc all of that is determined by this zone okay and so since this is going to serve as such a key level of resistance it is very common that once we reach it that there will be sell-offs because the reason is bears who may have bought here who don't believe in the long-term potential are under the understanding that there is always this bounce right this always this dead cat bounce or a reversal so if they think that the price is going to continue downwards they will take advantage of this 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 uh, dead cat balance here they buy it they ride that thing up until fibonacci retracement levels this is where they think the peak is they set a lot of those stop um the stop orders in which they'll sell it when we get to this level and then it causes a bit of a pullback okay and that happens quite often and so of course we'll talk about what determines if we're in a bear market or not in a second here but i want to show you all that this is such a key level of resistance because of that and with so many bears selling at at this level because they don't have that long-term faith or mid-term faith they don't think we're going back into a bull run it causes the price to go down so we look at this for example it's doing a similar move we look at xrp very similar area we look at bnb very similar area we look at ethereum tried to surpass it couldn't hold support came to back test support felt it couldn't hold it we look at some like Matic, for example. We couldn't even get out of our 0.5 to 382, but this is still another key area of resistance. We look at XLM, another one. We very came up, barely interacted with that level before seeing continuation downward. Okay, so when we do run into these key levels of resistance mixed in with such a big event like El Salvador, and you know buying 200 Bitcoin as the digital currency becomes legal tender, we can see that that can be the perfect storm for a pullback as a little bit of resistance causes a minor pullback. A sell the news event causes a little bit of a bigger pullback, and then that big pullback is caused by people getting nervous that we're going into a bear market, okay? So what we're looking for now, right? Now that we've seen this happen, and you know, people are panicking and freaking out, and you're going to see every dang on news outlet saying that this is the bear market, and that this was a bull trap, and that the price is, you know, <laughs> it's never coming back. Even we, we have, you know, cryptos like ADA, which smashed through their highs, you know, ran into key resistance at their extension levels, just another area of resistance, of course. Same thing with Solana running into its a uh, 3.618 resistance. Even though we're simply just running into resistance right now for pretty much all cryptos, it's going to be a lot of news outlets saying this is it. This is death. This is when it all gets bad. And I'm here to tell you when I think that is. Okay. 
So what we do know is again, when we see these uptrends, there are uptrends and there are pullbacks to the downside. Uptrends, boom, and we do this over and over and over again. So there's, whenever we're coming to the downside, all we gotta do is look to make sure we hold important levels. That's it, that's simply it. So what I'm looking for personally is on the daily time frames. on the daily time frames, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our, our EMAs pulled up, our 20, 50, 100, and we don't need our Bollinger Bands, we can get rid of that for now. And what we're looking to see is that we are able to simply hold our EMAs. Now, I'm actually going to make this one a light blue just so it's easier for you to see. There we go. So what we're looking to see is that this 20, 50, 100, and 200 EMA on the daily are held. When we lose them, that's when the price really starts to fall, right? Like, as we can see here, once we lost that, we saw that big fall all the way from about 40,000 down to 28,000 relatively quick, which was a pretty significant move, okay? So as long as we are able to hold these EMAs, not just for Bitcoin, but look at all of our, our cryptos. ADA's holding well. Solana, still hasn't even reached them. That thing's way extended still. XRP, holding well. BNB, holding well. They're all still doing great, okay? It applies to all of them. As long as we can hold on top of our, our, our different EMAs right now, we're still looking good. Things are still looking real green. I mean, look back here on this way up. We would come down to retest the same area, these same exact areas and on these 50 EMAs and 100 EMAs. It happens all the time, okay? So until we start to lose those levels, ignore the, ignore the news, okay? Just ignore the big hype because at the end of the day, we do know that there's, um, there's some of those below the surface uh, reasonings for some of those bigger outlets to start to say, oh, it's a bear market, try to push the price down, manipulate, manipulation, whatever. We're just gonna look at this from a technical logical standpoint and say, this happens all the time. We see the price come down to retest and it happens quite often. You mix that in with a sell the news event and this is what happens, okay? So we wanna see the price be able to hold our EMAs. Now another level we wanna see it be able to hold even if for some reason it does lose these EMAs relatively quickly is our downside retracement levels. So what that means is as we do know, the price whenever it is coming you know, back up, say it goes down, it's going back up, there's retracement levels to the upside. Well, when the price is going up and it's about to start going down, there are retracement levels to the downside. And so what we're looking to see is that if we just smash straight through all of these EMAs, we still have this key level of support for all of our cryptos off of this big move. The way in which you're going to find it, let's get rid of this. I want to show you how to find it actually. So you can apply it to your cryptos. You go from the swing low, typically created for July 20th or 19th, to the swing high that was set just earlier today or yesterday. Now you're gonna draw a Fibonacci from that level to that one. In this Z, this region right here, 0 0.618 to 0 0.786 is our minimum support level. We could fall all the way back down here and this still be a healthy retracement to set of a higher low to go back up to find support to recapture our EMAs to set that higher high. Okay, we are in no way entering a bear market just yet. Okay, and I know I've seen so many posts already. Oh, this is it. This is death. This is the bear market. And I'm just looking at it like we've not lost any important levels yet. Okay, so look to see. Do we hold our Fibonacci retracement levels? For Bitcoin specifically, we're looking at 34,000 roughly. That's 0 0.786, right around 34,000. As long as we can hold that, we're looking real good. Okay, if we look at some other cryptos, for example, we're looking at a massive move okay i mean we're looking at a massive move to the upside which could be followed by an equally massive move to the downside i mean we could come as down as low as a dollar and 83 cents we got pretty dang on close but we've already retraced so much okay so just apply this fibonacci to you, from your swing low to your swing high look at that 618 to 786 as long as we are above this we're gravy we're all good okay even better we remain above some our 50 and our 20 ema if we can stay above those people it, it, we're looking good okay so i know there's a lot of nerves and i know a lot of people are freaking out and not too excited about what we're seeing but i'm just here to say we've not really lost any important levels in my opinion in the short term maybe of course um we've, we've lost some of our key short-term indicators but in the midterm and long term this thing is just looking real normal to me i'm okay with it especially for a big event that we did see from um, El Salvador, okay? So we'll watch it, I'll update you guys. If we do start to lose any important levels, I'll let you know. If we regain any important levels, I'll let you know. So definitely do stay tuned. Make sure you don't miss any of the videos by subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you are first to know whenever we do make a big move to the upside or the downside. But just remember, emotions will make you do stupid things, okay? Your emotions will lead you to do things that make no sense. Keep your emotions out of it, okay? I know it's hard. We all have money invested into these things, and it sucks to watch it go down 20%. But at the end of the day, if you can make calculated and logical decisions, you will put yourself in a much better place than you would be if you just made a bunch of emotional decisions. So with that being said, I will see you all very soon with the next update. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Peace.